Run. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's On The Run, and it's greetings from lovely Hong Kong. I'd like to say lovely sunny Hong Kong, but it's actually a bit drizzly and overcast and raining in, at the moment. Anyway, so be it. My first time in Hong Kong for nearly three years, and it's great to be back here. Um, of course, IAG does have an office in Hong Kong, so it's great to be back in the office at long last and to be meeting people in the flesh, which is much better than meeting them on Zoom. Okay, let's get into it for this week. So on Friday last week, our lead story was about Singapore cracking down on illegal World Cup gambling. Well, you hear this all the time, don't you? Um, every World Cup, there's a story around this, and it's often out of Singapore, Malaysia. Uh, a lot of sports betting uh, in Asia ends up tracking back to that that region and um, it just goes to show that gambling should be regulated otherwise it goes illegal and it goes underground uh, Monday's lead story uh, landings uh, young uh, Ji Hui is gone he's been suspended as chairman by the company um, after the Hong Kong market regulator launched legal action against Dr Young well you might remember he famously um, was, uh, uh, I don't know what the word is, extradited, renditioned, uh, uh, helped in, in his travel, whatever it was, from uh, the airport in Cambodia to, um, to the, sorry about those messages, to the mainland. Uh, he was missing for a few months and then turned up again and explained to the market that he was assisting the Chinese government with their inquiries. Anyway, so uh, Dr. Young is officially gone. Uh, Tuesday's lead story was about Morgan Stanley reducing its estimates for Macau GGR for 2023 and 2024. Well, I'm not surprised. I think they need to reduce them a lot more. They're, they're very, very bullish, Morgan Stanley. And I've had a lot of respect for Morgan Stanley's um, uh, commentary on Macau over the years. But I think at the moment they're way too bullish and I have some thoughts about why they're so bullish, but I'll keep them to myself for the moment. And this was in response to the uh, launch of the e-visas, which happened uh, recently, kind of being a bit of a dud and, and no travel and no real uptick in travel. And I think that the uh, problems of Macau are more fundamental than just e-visas. But I've said a lot about that and won't go on about it any further uh, today. Uh, Wednesday's lead story was that Star Entertainment in Australia announced that it will be spending in the order of 30 million US dollars in remediation costs to remedy all its various ills that it has and warning the market that this is a, a cost to expect in their accounts in 2023. Uh, see, if you do naughty stuff, you end up having to pay. Thursday's uh, lead story was a really interesting one about the Philippines, um, the GCG Gaming Advisory Services, uh, which is a consultancy in Asia, estimated that the Philippines uh, gaming market, the GGR, would uh, essentially double to, or even more than double, to 10 billion US dollars by 2027. If that's the case, it will uh, be substantially bigger than uh, what Macau has been for the last few years. Uh, Macau hasn't got close to that number. So yeah, it's very, very interesting. And I think this just illustrates the ongoing growth of the Philippines. Quite frankly, right now, you have to say the Philippines is the number one gaming market in Asia, not Macau. Uh, honorable mentions this week, quite a few. Uh, the Paul Bromberg, the CEO of uh, Spectrum Asia, uh, mentioned that he thought that discussions on casinos in Thailand would be postponed until after the elections due in that country in 2023. He mentioned this at the Macau Gaming Show, uh, which was an online summit organized by IAG for the MGEMA, the Macau Gaming Equipment Manufacturers Association. Uh, Bloomberry, of uh, the operator of Solaire, a great company in the Philippines, uh, inching closer to taking over PH Resorts, according to PH Resorts. So for those of you that don't know, PH Resorts uh, is the developer of the Emerald Bay uh, IR 
uh, in Cebu. It's not yet open. The, the other IR that in Cebu that is opened is New Star. I was there last week, uh, and it's still in the very early stages of opening, but it is open. They've had a soft opening, and they're open. Uh, and also PH Resorts has uh, a, a property called The Base in Clark as well, which they haven't broken ground on yet. And if Bloomberry were to take over PH Resorts, I'm sorry, lots of messages today. Um, if they were to take over PH Resorts, uh, then that would be an expansion for them uh, beyond the Solaire North that is due to open next year, beyond their Cavite property, and they would be expanding to Cebu and to Clark. So who knows? We could see Bloomberry with as many as five integrated resorts throughout the Philippines. Pretty impressive stuff. Uh, Disney acquired the Global Dream ship that was Genting Hong Kong's. Global Dream, an enormous uh, passion, passenger liner, uh, actually had 9,000 uh, berths. Uh, or that's rooms to you for passengers. Uh, Disney is going to reduce that to 6,000 to make them a bit more spacious. But Disney is, has bought that from the liquidator of Genting Hong Kong. Genting Hong Kong, of course, famously going bust with 2.8 billion US in debts. Uh, but the rest of Genting, of course, surviving. And Macau's GDP for the third quarter of 2022 was down 33% year on year, a, a massive drop in anybody's language. And of course, we all know what that is, uh, is as a result of the drop in the gaming industry, the drop in the tourism, the drop in visitation. And noting that last year's uh, GDP was nothing to write home about either in 2021. If you were to compare it to uh, 2019, I don't know what the number would be, but it would be way over 50%. It could be 70, 80 percent, something like that. I'd have to look up the numbers. That's just my off the top of the head estimate, but further indications of Macau's woes that have been going for, on for the past three years. What else do we have uh, here at the, the rundown? Uh, new, oh, new casino um, at Colombo's Lotus Tower. So Colombo in Sri Lanka, the capital of Sri Lanka, the Lotus Tower is the tallest structure in all of Sri Lanka, sort of like the, um, you know, there's the C one in Seattle and there's the one in Sydney, you see these towers. And of course, there's the one in Macau, Macau Tower, similar sort of structure. And there's a plan for a casino to be constructed in the Lotus Tower in Colombo. Quite interesting. Uh, what else? Mega World. Mega World announced a $262 million redevelopment of Winford in Manila, which is already a resort and casino, but more just a sort of a casino, really, with a hotel. But they want to develop that into a, I guess, what you would call a true IR. And they're spending $262 million, so we're not talking billions. Uh, and it is just a building. It doesn't have a lot of land around it. Uh, but $262 million goes a long way in the Philippines, and that will be a really major redevelopment. Mega World, of course, is the owner of Newport World Resorts. It's a subsidiary of uh, Alliance Global. Uh, the the C family. So uh, yeah, very interesting. Mega World is continuing with its developments. And of course, it's now taken over with the demise of Sun City. It will be the you know, predominant and leading partner in the West Side uh, IR being developed at Entertainment City. Um, of course, Sun City, uh, or no, LET Group as it is now, L-E-T, still has its equity. But I think... Um, you know, all the noise from Sun City will die down and it will be more considered a mega world project. Um, what else? Oh, Macau government asks for more. Surprise, surprise. So TDM uh, Portuguese Radio, which mysteriously seems to be getting all this information about the confidential uh, the confidential uh, negotiations between the uh, concessionaires or the bidders that, or the tenderers, I should say, and the government. I wonder where that government organisation, TDM Radio, is getting information that only the government and the operators would know. I wonder. I can tell you, I've got a lot of information about what's been going on in those in those um, those negotiations because you know people will do to tell us things, and much of it we have not reported out of respect for the process. Not so for TDM Radio, which has uh, happily reported all this stuff that should be confidential. 
I wonder where they got that information from that only the operators and the government knows with them being a government uh, media outlet. I wonder. Anyway, uh, they reported that the government wanted the 100 billion um, mop commitment to be increased. Surprise, surprise. Well, that doesn't really surprise anyone, does it? Sellers always want a higher price. Buyers always want a lower price. And I think, quite frankly, the government has done really well to get a 100 billion mop commitment out of the operators, given the terrible environment that we currently have in Macau with no end in sight, and which the government is completely ignoring, pretending isn't existing. I think the government's conducted its negotiations like it's 2013, uh, not 2022. Um, what else? Oh, yes, there was a senator in the Philippines calling for PADCOR to be split. Well, these calls have been made for years and years now. Um, PADCOR is both an operator and a regulator, which is a bit weird. They say there's a firewall between their their um their hat as an operator and their hat as a regulator but who knows so anyway that's it for this week a little bit longer this week because i i spoke a little bit slower and there was a lot to get through and we will see you next week from a surprise location see you next friday to find out where the surprise location is have a great week have a great weekend and bye for now see ya Run.